Welcome everyone to episode 43 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and this week we will be diving into an indie game called Black Emperor. Um, this game is a Japanese motorcycle-inspired endless runner, and this was an independently developed game that was found by the people over at Bumble Bear, Nikita and Josh, and they actually brought it to an arcade cabinet um, along their line of Killer Queen and everything. So today I have Tomas Vicuna with me today. How are you doing, Tomas? Hi, hey, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I'm, I'm really glad you were able to make it so we can talk about this game that I've played so much at uh, the Up Down in Minneapolis, and I had a blast playing it at, uh, what was that, uh, Bumble Bash 4 in Tennessee. Um, before we jump into everything, I just want to remind everybody that's listening, if you enjoy what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the podcast, whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple, whatever podcast platform, or YouTube. It helps us out a ton, it helps us grow the community and give these developers a little bit more light. So I want to jump right in here, Tomas, just introduce yourself and let the people that are listening know who you are and what you do. Well, hi, my name is uh, Tomas Vicuña. Um, I'm the developer of Black Emperor. Uh, yeah, that's sort of like the short answer. Perfect. Um, yeah, so... I guess we'll jump right into the game um, and Black Emperor. And for the people that are listening and aren't watching on YouTube, can you describe the game to them so that they have an idea of what we're talking about? Like, what is this game? What does it look like? So I would say like it's a very minimalist game. Uh, it's sort of, it is an endless runner. Um, well, you can travel like this uh, Japanese motorcycle Bososoku character and it's driving through the desert and you're trying to maintain yourself on screen um, as long as you can and if you go too fast uh, you die and if you go too slow you die and um, yeah you're just trying to maintain yourself on the road as long as you can and on top of like that simple premise there's like a bunch of aesthetics and cultural reference and like visual flair that I worked on a ton. So it's it's more like of a visceral experience rather than a than a, a literal explanatory experience. That's how it, it came out. So it's always kind of weird like trying to explain it like in words, but, but yeah, it's sort of like of this uh, teenage motorcycle culture um, driving through the desert um, in sort of like a kamikaze sort of style. Yeah, I think that's a perfect description of it. I mean, really, you when you come up to the game and you see it, it's basically a, a Japanese motorcycle driving through the desert just continuously, and you, you have to stay on the road. If you fall behind, you die. If you go too far ahead, you die. If you run into a guardrail, you die. And the sand slows you down like crazy. We have a decent idea of where the inspiration for this game was drawn um, like you've already said do you know or can you recall the moment that you kind of were like oh this would be a really cool thing to make a game out of it's kind of um, as everything that like there's like a long version of the story and a short one I'll try to make it a short one but go it, ahead and tell came, the long story we're totally cool with that it sort of like started uh, I used to be a filmmaker, not a, a programmer, and I have like little relation with video games. And I reach a point in my uh, filmmaking career where um, I started playing around with the idea uh, of doing something else than filmmaking for a little bit in order to, like, to gain more perspective. And then eventually like come back to film like with more experience accumulated and make more interesting films. So I, I had like uh, some kind of a couple of decent short films that won a couple of awards. So I had like a, a portfolio that that could allow allow me uh, to, to apply some, to some sort of scholarship or something uh, in, in order like to investigate another field uh, for, for this purpose. That's where the idea of getting involved with video games came about. Uh, so yeah, I, I applied to this uh, graduate program and I was lucky to get the scholarship and, and then got into the program. 
and then uh, some when I started the program, I, I realized like I, I cannot, I don't know programming, and I don't know how to illustrate or like draw. And I said like, well, programming, it's more difficult than drawing, so I'll I'll, I'll start with drawing. And um, some people liked it. I, I liked it too, but but I was not like a trained designer in order like to be like an illustrator. So, like I could only do one style. Right, so so people thought like it, it was like unique or interesting, but but I, I was I was not gonna be able like to, or I couldn't imagine myself being an illustrator because it was only so far one style that I could do. And um, so then I said, well, what could I do? And it's like a a two option sort of thing. And uh, I said, like, well, I, I I have to learn how to program. So. I, I took all the courses of, of programming that I could. I took courses in the computer science department. And it was it was kind of a stressful because if you fail one course, they would take my, the scholarship out and I would get kicked out because I had no funding. But but it it, it managed to pay off. And well, just to explain a little bit the context, Black Emperor or the first version of Black Emperor was my first attempt to do a video game at all, like something that I could call my own. But it was like the first prototype was done when when I was really bad at programming. Like I think I, I took like the code from a prototype of of a very raw Super Mario uh, jumping physics class <laughs> that I was at. And then I like sort of like replaced the, the sprites and then turn it all black and white. As I was telling you, I couldn't like draw very much so so I, I put everything in like in black and white at first it was like a black and white game and it, it sort of like turned it out interesting like it had like the, the Japanese like again like Black Emperor is also as, as many of the listeners or, or you you would know there's this band called Godspeed You Black Emperor which is like a post-rock Canadian band uh, that took the name from a Japanese documentary uh, from the same name, which is like a cult documentary, I, I believe like it's from the 80s or 70s, uh, which is like a documentary about uh, a motorcycle gang called the Black Emperors in, in, in Japan, or I, I believe it was in Japan. It was in, in, in Japan. And... Um, and uh, so, so I, I, I sort of when, when, when I did the first prototype, I thought oh, that's a really cool concept, and, and try to like paste something, but for self-educational purposes, right? So I said like, well, I, I cannot do a lot with programming. I cannot do a lot with illustrations, but I, but I know this like this this really cool aesthetic and this really cool idea, and I'm just gonna carve or shape whatever I can do around this concept and um, and that turned out to be okay like some some, some people liked it or didn't like it that much uh, but I felt like there was something special there and then the, uh, I continued to learn more about programming more about illustration and, and then uh, the moment of my thesis came and uh, the moment of the thesis was like well you 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 should come into groups of people and, and do a video game. Or you could do solo, but, but we don't recommend it. And I said like, well, I'm not gonna be like a trained illustrator. I'm not gonna be like a trained programmer either. Uh, maybe maybe I'll take like this first, first pseudo game that I did. And now that I know more, after like this couple of years that, that that I've trained myself on how to program, how to illustrate, and I'll, I'll try to do w what was actually like in my head, let's say. And um, so, so it was like a little bit of this experimentation on on, on really trying to polish down infinitely on this really minimalist idea. Again, with the other coordinate of uh, knowing also my own capacities or how could I stretch my capa capabilities like um, and 
always like within the safe safe space of knowing that it was not going to be a commercial game but it was done in a more self-educating manner and um, the thesis it turned out to a, a couple of people or some friends within the world started to like it and started to get excited saying like you should release you should release this stuff and uh, I started like looking at a format w where I could release it because I used, I used to play it like in in the computer like with uh, with with whatever like and and somebody said like you should release it on phone like everybody has access to a phone it would reach a, a larger audience uh, so so I just like started doing it on phone that's why I'm not. I'm not sure if this is in the recording, but but before you asked that question, I was saying like it was not originally intended to be a cell phone game either. It's sort of like it was what was available at the moment. Uh, in fact, like somebody said, like this should this would be like a really arcade game, and I said like, yeah, it would be, but like you know, how can we make like this arcade game? Like, I don't know. Uh, again, like somebody said, like you, sh you should do it on, like, on a phone. So I started adapting on, 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 on a phone. The problem that with the phone was uh, I had put so much uh, weight or so much interest in the visuals that with the small screen, a lot of that wa was being lost. But again, if I wanted like a, a, a bigger screen, it, the game was too minimal in, in order like to, f to fit that format, or, or at least that's how I felt. So fun it was. And uh, then there was like this game fair where, where I was able uh, to show it. And what I did was um, I put like a like a screen <laughs> with uh, with Bosso Soku like. Um, which is motorcycle gangs from the from the 70s, like Japanese motorcycle gangs, <laughs> like footage, like documentary footage from from that uh, on one screen, and on the other, I was like projecting into a big screen, um, a, a phone screen. So I had like the phone connected to a giant screen. So people would come up and play with the phone, and everybody would look uh, into the giant screen, basically. And uh, I was giving like this uh, spot which was a little bit dark and, and that was cool because I turned off the lights and, and you could see like all the lights and all the visual effect in, in with more impact and uh, then then I brought like a board and, and people started like uh, uh, drawing their high scores so I think like th thinking back I think that's where the, the first moment where the dynamics of an arcade sort of logic started to happen like people were, were starting like to write their high scores and people were doing the line when when somebody would get the high score people would start to scream Ar around like this this uh, exposition or fair like there was like a, a rumor that, that that this weird game all in japanese was happening so it, 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 it turned out to be like a, a, a special moment at that event and uh, I was lucky enough that, that Nick and Josh uh, were at, at, at that event at that time and uh, they saw uh, this dynamic or this logic that I was describing then uh, they, they approached and they said like they were really interested in, in talking to me about like plans for an, an alternative sort of uh, format for this game yeah I think I think they understood basically where where I was trying to go, even though the game was not an, an arcade yet, and I think that's why why we connected. And then like a, a second sort of creative cycle began, where it was more than more than adapting the game from a phone format into an arcade format, format, trying to understand what the arcade format is about and how it could enrich the game so for example uh, the the inputs uh, are touch in, in in mobile how can the game benefit from a from an arcade hardware so we started thinking like oh you could have like a custom control and then we started investigating about like the rollerball for example 
which if you think about it, like it's very similar to touching the screen. Like you, you touch the, the, the roller ball and you move up and it's like touching the screen and moving up, right? Like there's mouses that, that work that way. Yeah, and, like the um, touch and drag and the, the wheel kind of acts as you're, right. you're controlling for the bike. But we only wanted like the Y axis. So I'm saying like, well, what could only like be the, the Y axis? And I'm saying, oh, you know what would be, would be cool? Like a skateboard wheel, you know? Like if, if I has like a skateboard wheel in it. And yeah, I think, was, I think that was perfect. And, and, and it was just like investigating like what's with the resources that we had, of course, but but trying to connect as many cool ideas possible to it, like plugging in uh, cool ideas to it, in order like to to become like this Christmas tree of, of cool concepts. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I totally get you. Um, so so it's not like uh, there was a raw cool concept that it was carved and like then made like. It started off like this with this really cool culture, Japanese motorcycle culture, and then carving my way through, and then inviting them to the creative process, and then carving us together, and then like you know, I, I feel it more of a more closely to to a jam rather than than a composition, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it, it does sound way more like it was a jam, and it just kind of things just fell into place. You were just trying something new, trying to learn, get a new perspective, like you said, for your filmmaking. And things just kind of one after the next just kept happening, dominoes kept falling, and then it turned into what it turned into. And that kind of leads me into what I was curious about next. And that is, what was it like to build the cabinet with Bumble Bear? What was it like to team up with them and work on this project together? And what kind of input did you have? What did they do? What was this whole creative process like? Oh wow! I mean, Bamba Bear is like one of the most amazing people like I've met creatively. Like seriously, like if anybody has like the the possibility on working creatively with them, like I would totally recommend. Yeah, they're just awesome. Like I cannot find. Let me think about it, like a little bit. I think they're really trying to understand what you're going for and see how do they fit in into that e- equation. If it's not going to work out for them to work themselves into the equation, they're more than happy like to say so. I, I, I don't know how to say it. Like, uh, I'm not sure how they are with other projects. I think they were. It, it was a really good fit for Black Emperor because they liked the game. They really understood what I was going for. They really liked the reference. The, the game was full of reference. And like, I don't know about you, but, but I'm... I'm I like cultural reference a lot, so maybe it's because I come from film, but when you watch a film and you say, ah, oh, it took like a little bit from this, oh, and this music came a little bit from that, oh, do you know this album, oh, do you know this other film, ah, oh, but it actually took from, and I just love that stuff, or like, oh, this, that character just said something that comes from a book, oh, and this book comes from a, like, literally recording, like, it's it's just like an hypertextual connectivity going on that I just find fascinating and I think they understood that the game had a lot with that so I was trying to show where where the different ideas were coming from and what were the sort of music that I like what was the sort of aesthetic that I like what sort of painters was looking at and they they were just like trying to expose that I don't know how to say to multiply like whatever concept I was throwing it, so it was like, oh, what do you have for the background? So I was looking at this Japanese like painter, and they were come up with another Japanese painter, and you know, it's like, oh, I was looking at these sort of tattoos, like the, the they do, and, and and they were come, up, oh, we're looking at tattoos now. Oh, I got like this book of tattoos, and, and um, I don't know. I, I just found like we we were really synced and. Um, they are really committed into doing unique arcade experiences, and, and I and I, to, I totally understand that vision. So I think I'm sort of biased in that way that I really like love Bumble Bear. Yeah, that's that's what I I could say about those guys. If you're listening, I, I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it. It seems like 
they're super cool and Nikita's always really 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 cool when I reach out to him and we've talked on the podcast a couple of times and they just seem to be a, a really collaborative team and willing to take ideas from anywhere and like you said you're looking at different artists and tattoos and different cultural references and there's so many things that they could tie into the game to really build the story out of something that you originally created in such a simplistic manner like you had just the bare bones you just there's forward backwards up and down and there's not too much movement outside of that um i guess as a new developer i'm curious as to what advice you would give people that are interested in creating video games what advice would you give them to just get them started you know i mean the hardest part of doing anything or creating anything is getting going what would you say to them to kind of give them that that push forward that's a tough one because i don't consider myself like a super expert on the on how but but i could give like the advice to an old me who's just starting if that's fair enough yeah that's totally fair prototype a lot play test a lot trash ideas a lot so build it and don't be afraid to throw it out yeah and don't be afraid like people don't like it either i think when i was just starting off i was like kind of afraid that people were, were not liking it because there's like a certain moment where, where you show a prototype and you're like and, and somebody who's play testing it is like ah oh, this sucks or, or it doesn't say it to your face but you know that that's what they are thinking and you're like oh, but i know like i'm not showing them the real version you know and and i think that's a prompt of either work harder <laughs> Or, like, don't take it so seriously and just don't be afraid to trash it and go on to the next prototype. Like, I have, like, a, uh, somebody that... This was before, like, the video game era. My video game era, like, in the filmmaking era. But who was saying, like, you can only be creative when making. And, and I think that holds true uh, for video games, at least. Though I think in, in my case, like I love prototyping, but I don't love doing final products. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think that's a, a different story. But if you're just starting out, I think doing a lot of prototypes would work. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm hearing just try it. I mean, like you can always spend some time and make something, and if it doesn't turn out the way you want, you could start over. Like it, it's not the end of the world if you need to start over on a project, and not everybody makes their best project right away you probably had plenty of prototypes yeah and you know what like trash it might be a little bit harsh not not you put it that way like for example with the with the story of uh, how black emperor came to be like this was my first prototype and probably uh, i was not happy with it like i had this idea and then it was my my first try and i said wow this video game making is so hard and then I, like i had like the possibility like a couple of years later like what do you want to do and, and i decided like to take that prototype take the dust off and like polish it out and, and now it's an arcade cabinet so it's not a, maybe it's not about like trashing it but maybe you can save it until you learn enough to know how to execute it you know? yeah put it on the shelf for later right i think i think i think that's it and uh, and don't don't take criticism too seriously might not be because like the game sucks or anything it might just be because your capacities are are not there yet in order to execute the amazing idea that you have or something yeah i mean the other thing is maybe the game's not done you know i mean if you're in prototype and you're testing clearly the game isn't done so if they don't like it you can take that feedback and use it as improvement don't take it as as harsh criticism i agree i agree that's that's like a super positive vision there's also like the the other side of the blade which is like i don't know at the end it's, it's super personal you know but but people who keep trying on some idea like i know this like you play it and you feel like it, it's not the prototype is not going anywhere and you feel like you understood what they were going for and it's still not gonna work out and you see some people like trying and trying and trying doesn't work and doesn't work and doesn't work and, and sometimes you say like oh that they should just give up you know and sometimes you have to like sometimes that happens to you too so so it's also like being honest okay maybe this sucks i'm just gonna go to the next idea 
you know, it's like a double-edged sword. Like I, I guess that's where the first mode of expression was coming from. Don't be afraid of trashing the idea and go to the next one. Like, don't become too obsessed with with one thing. Maybe you can put it on pause and move to the other thing. You just like maintain yourself in creative movement and not for those creative juices to to keep on surfacing. Yeah, just make sure you're moving. You can you can always right. take that idea, put it on the shelf, work on something else, and maybe an inspiration from that next project gives you that missing piece you needed for the last project. Exactly. Maybe that moves you forward. Or maybe you're creating a single player and you put it in the shelf and two years later you take the dust off and you take it off the shelf and it's not a single player. It's actually like, I don't know, a horror game. <laughs> like a horror multiplayer game. <laughs> it, can al- it can always change, you never know. Yeah. I guess the, the last question I had for you, now that we've talked about the game and kind of what happened with Bumble Bear, what are some of your earliest video game memories? Where did you really get introduced to them? And what do you remember playing when you were younger? Well, I, I used to have like a Nintendo and I used to play a lot of Mario and I really used to like it. It's very generic, my answer, but that's my first video game experience. And then I think one of the good memories that I have related to video games was when I was like around nine or ten. There was like this arcade place that I used to go. I didn't go a lot, it was like summer, and I believe it like was like only one summer that I, that I went, or maybe two summers. Uh, it was not a lot, but there was like a moment where, where it was cool to go to. I remember the experience of, of going with, with a little bit of cash and trading that with a bunch of like coins and then like and the feeling of, of choosing your experience, you know. Like I want to have the experience with the airplanes. I want to have the experience of the, of the fighting, the, the t-shirt less fighting. I want to have like the experience of the football. And, uh, and and also like seeing how people gathered around certain machines and those were like the popular machines and the people who were like really cool at those machines like people will look up to or I don't know how to explain like I was just a kid but but, but I have like like fond memories of, of that and, and I think that 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 relates a little bit with with what we were talking before about like um, having an experience that, that has a certain aesthetic and, and a certain like cultural references and, and, and draws people in because of that. And then I think a little bit older started like playing horror games, but I was a little bit of a coward, so I didn't like to play them alone. So it was like an experience to play it with more friends and like be scared together. And I don't know, I remember as a kid like being afraid to a game was pretty interesting I guess like I'm still like afraid of games and certain games now like why why would you pay for a game that makes you terrified um, but it has like something attractive you know but yeah I, I, I crossed like a face where, where, where I like those kind of games and then more like flash forward I don't know like 10 15 years after I think I, I like more the casual ones the ones that you can pick up and, and drop I know that sounds again super generic, but I think I think that summary so makes it a pretty good summary. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you brought up a lot of good points about games and just the history of them and how. I mean, it seems like even you coming through your gaming memories like does really run perfectly with the timeline. Um, paying for horror games kind of makes me laugh because I'm not big into horror games. I feel the same way about horror movies. Um, I don't really want to pay for the experience of being scared. That's not something that that really drives me but i think that's interesting the way that you like to play horror games and everything um i guess to wrap everything up with you tomas just uh give any shout outs that you want as well as any social media links where they can check out maybe projects you work on in the future and or uh anything with black emperor well black emperor was supposed to release uh, or or have a big push around COVID, so i would say like keep an eye on when COVID goes down or something <laughs> so we can have like a proper push for Black Emperor and other than that like actually no just keep, a, keep an eye on that I think the time for that game has not come yet so it still has 
a little moment to shine um, and I hope that happens once COVID slows down or it stops. Perfect. Well, I just want to thank you again for coming on, Tomas. Um, I'll throw those links down in the description for anybody that wants to check out uh, Black Emperor, Bumble Bear Games, stuff like that. Um, and if you're still listening, I appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like the podcast. It means the world to us. And until next time, peace. Peace.